So, obviously not all triangles look alike. In this video, we're going to learn about some of the different types of triangles and how we refer to them. Now, a scaling triangle has three sides, where each of the sides are different in lengths from each other. And since angles are closely related to the length of a side, which we'll cover in another video down the road, we can also say that the three angles in a scaling triangle are all different as well. Great. So let's move on to the next triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. Now, whereas the scaling triangle has three different side lengths and angles, the isosceles has two sides that are the same in length which makes two of the opposite angles equal to each other as well. One way to show that two sides are equal is through the use of little hatch marks. For example, since this isosceles triangle is equal in length over here and here, we can put a small hatch mark on both of them like so, to indicate that they are equal. However, in the situation for a scaling triangle that we were just looking at, it had three different side lengths so we can denote that by putting a hatch mark here, and then two hatch marks here, and then three over here to differentiate each side. And lastly, we have the equilateral triangle as our third type of triangle we can come across. So, for this triangle, all sides are equal in length. Consequently, since a triangle always adds up to be 180 degrees, and since an equilateral triangle has all equal sides, it also must have equal angles that are always 60 degrees each. Oh, and just like our previous examples, we can show that all sides on this triangle are equal by putting matching hatch marks on all sides here. Awesome! So, let's try an example of a question together now. Is the following an example of a scalene triangle? Well, the answer to this is no. This is because since these two sides have one hatch mark each, without any actual values, we can know that these two side lengths are equal to each other, and that this side is not equal to either of them, making it an isosceles triangle and not a scaling triangle. Good! Now, let's turn our attention away from the lengths of the side of a triangle, per se, and focus on the angles of them instead. So. If any one of the angles in a triangle were exactly 90 degrees, then we would call this type of triangle by default a right angle triangle, or for short, a right triangle. However, if the largest angle within a triangle is less than 90 degrees, then we would instead call this type of triangle an acute triangle. Great. Now, on the other hand, if the largest angle within a triangle is greater than 90 degrees, then we would call this type of triangle an obtuse triangle. So, with the knowledge we just gained about triangles, let's try another question together. A right triangle contains an angle equivalent to 36 degrees in one of its corners. What is the angle of the other corner? Well, the answer to this question would be D. And how did we come up with that answer? Well, we know that a triangle is made up of 180 degrees on the inside. And we also know that one of the angles inside the triangle is 36 degrees. Finally, since the question did say that the triangle is a right triangle, this means that there's also a 90 degree angle within there. So, all we would need to do to find the third angle would be to do 180 minus 36 minus 90 which equates to 54 degrees. Awesome! So there's quite a bit of memorization involved here, but these concepts on triangles are quite important. So we hope you try some questions and go over this lesson again if you had difficulty understanding it the first time around. Well then, until next time, have a good one. <laughs>